From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting another win for Donald Trump. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has been projected to be the winner of a primary election Tuesday in West Virginia. Key Senate Republicans are warming up a bit to Trump's prospects for victory in November. Mitch McConnell is the Senate Majority Leader. We're looking forward to a meeting at, at his request uh, later this week. <clears throat> I think most of my members uh, believe that he's uh, won the nomination the old-fashioned way. He got more votes than anybody else. And we respect the voices of the Republican primary voters across the country. On the Democratic side, Senator Bernie Sanders hopes to beat frontrunner Hillary Clinton in West Virginia. Voters in Nebraska are also going to the polls. President Barack Obama says he will visit Hiroshima, Japan late this month, becoming the first U.S. president to go to the city where in 1945 an American warplane dropped the world's first atomic bomb used in war. For seven decades, American presidents have avoided visiting Hiroshima and Nagasaki, apparently to avoid the impression that they are making an apology. White House spokesman Josh Earnest says the visit takes nothing away from the soldiers who fought in World War II. But look, there's also no diminishing uh, the important contribution of the greatest generation of Americans who didn't just uh, save the United States, but rather save the world uh, from tyranny. Josh Ernest, the head of Bangladesh's leading Islamist party, was executed Wednesday on charges of genocide and war crimes linked to the nation's war for independence in 1971. The nation's law minister says Motir Rahman Nizami, the 73-year-old leader of the Jamaat-e-Islami party, was hanged at Dhaka Central Jail. This is VOA News. Brazil's acting House Speaker has reversed a decision to annul the impeachment of President Dilma Rousseff. That decision means the Senate can take a vote Wednesday on putting Ms. Rousseff on trial. Her lawyers have launched a last-minute effort to head off that action, appealing to the Supreme Court to annul the proceedings. The president is accused of manipulating state funds to hide the state of the country's finances during her 2014 re-election campaign. She says her opponents are attempting a coup. The U.S. Defense Department says uh, sent rather a Navy warship to carry out a freedom of navigation operation in the disputed South China Sea Tuesday. A defense spokesman says the USS William P. Lawrence sailed within 12 nautical miles of Chinese-occupied Fiery Cross Reef. Elizabeth Trudeau is a spokeswoman for the State Department. This operation challenged attempts by China, Taiwan, and Vietnam to restrict navigational rights around the futures they claim, specifically that these three claimants purport to require prior permission or notification of transits through the territorial sea, contrary to international law. Elizabeth Trudeau. The Obama administration is accusing China of continuing to impose high taxes on U.S. chicken exports and refusing to comply with orders to follow global trading rules. U.S. Trade Representative Michael Froman said Tuesday the White House is mounting a challenge to China at the World Trade Organization demanding that it abide by WTO rules. United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights is calling on Turkey to allow independent investigators to probe reports of human rights abuses in the country's southeast. The call from Zaid Ra'ad al-Hussein comes as European leaders press Turkey to halt the flow of refugees into Europe, while at the same time pushing it to reform anti-terrorism laws that opponents say are increasingly used against government critics. Turkish officials say a car bomb killed three people and wounded 45 in the mainly Kurdish city of Diyarbakir. The explosion struck 
A police vehicle transporting seven suspected militants of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party for medical treatment. It was not immediately clear if the dead include any of the suspects. U.S. and Somali forces conducted a joint raid early Tuesday on a base of the militant group Al-Shabaab, killing or capturing an unknown number of militants. Residents in the village of Tora Toro said soldiers dropped from helicopters on the outskirts of the village and went to the target on foot. A Somali official said the operation lasted for two hours and the troops met no resistance. He declined to identify the targets. In Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from VOA.